Hey y'all, what it do? It's cause don't give no to it, my kid. And yes, I do. Yeah. And welcome to my city. Y'all should stick around cause you're gonna need a committee. Hey. And we about to get litty. Down 70 pounds, but I'm still thicky. And I did it the natural way. Of course, I'ma hold you down. Promise you gon' stay? Okay. Your girl been a big deal. So follow me on the social so I know it's real. Yeah. At Colossal Big Deal. And that's with a K. Duh, you know the feel. And we gon' talk about some trauma. Cause it's time to heal And I'm a dog mom too And y'all should know I love my bitch So we gon' keep it cute Probably drop a few reviews Bust a few holes and give reactions too Your girl looking for her tribe I need a thousand neighbors just to get by So like, comment, share, and subscribe Then turn on that button to get notified I got you mixes and some storytelling vibes With a whole lot of silly on the side I'm thinking margarita Monday and taco Tuesday too Cause drinks ain't get easier That's what I like to do I hope you enjoy the view Yeah, it's a new mayor in town Come for the attractions and stay for the lifestyle What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Court City. It's your girl, Courtney, and I want to thank you all for rocking with me. For those of you who have genuinely been rocking with me, thank you. You are appreciated. With that being said, it is still National Storytelling Week, so happy National Storytelling Week. Yes, y'all. I have been bringing stories to you, story times to you all, sharing different personal experiences from my life, hopefully giving you all um, the opportunity to get a better understanding of who I am as a person, but not just that. Also to share my experiences because I feel like, you know, even though my experiences and my life might be unique to me, I'm pretty sure that other people have gone through some of the things that I've gone through. And if you haven't yourself personally, you may know someone who has gone through some of the things that I've gone through. And so, you know, I just want to kind of be a light or like a beacon or a reminder. You know what? It's a quote that I love. It's a quote that's by Joan Rivers and it goes something like, like, um, life doesn't get better, you get better. And I love that quote. So let that quote be a testament to to the truth that life doesn't get better. It's you that gets better. We get better at learning how to live life. We get better at learning to manage our expectations as well as our actions and um, living life, okay? So if things are not happening to you, you're dead. So if you have things that you're going through, it's all good. You're living life, okay? Life is for the living. Just, just keep going because you will get better at life okay so on that note yes i do have another story time for you all today and today's story time is going to be about my experience being homeless yes y'all homeless in new york city okay oh my gosh where to begin where to begin well, I mean, you you guys already know that I didn't have the best relationship with my mom. I didn't have the best um, upbringing as a child. But I want to shout out my mom at this exact moment because she is the parent that rocked with me. So shout out to you, mom, for rocking with me. I do appreciate you on that note. With that being said, it was very hard still. It was still hard as heck nonetheless. And I can remember... Um, so I, I, at this point in time, I had graduated high school. I had a job as a program coordinator in an after school program in the South Bronx that I loved. I actually landed that job after being a peacemaker with the Harlem Children's Zone, which is, which was then known as Reedland. It's now known as the Harlem Children's Zone. But, um, yeah, it was a wonderful time in my life. I was, I was thriving, um, as far as my career was concerned, as far as, you know, getting out and actually working, having my diploma, but it was just a headache at home. And I knew that if I didn't do something about my living arrangement, I was not going to, I wasn't going to be able to, to keep my spirits up, you know? So I knew I needed to move out before being put out. But unfortunately, um, I wasn't working at Harlem Children's Zone anymore. Harlem Children's Zone was a wonderful opportunity. It was a job that I had that was funded through AmeriCorp. So I got a nice stipend, a bi-weekly stipend, and I got money for school. So it was a wonderful opportunity to work for that program. Um, and I actually found out about that program through the career um, center counselor at my high school that I graduated from, which is Manhattan Night and Day Comprehensive High School. So as I told you all, I met some wonderful people at Manhattan Night and Day Comprehensive Night School. And one of those amazing people is Jane. I love you, Jane. Jane helped me to change 
my life, okay? She um, was the career center counselor. She introduced me to the opportunity as a, as a peacemaker with the Harlem Children's Zone. I was able to land that job. Unfortunately, it only lasted for a year because that was the protocol for the uh, position. And um, there were many fortunates though. Like I said, we got a bi-weekly bi stipend that was very nice. And we also got a nice AmeriCorps check to go to school with. So um, that set in motion for me being able to go to college. I was very happy to spend that money, like, yo, going to college one day, you know? But with that being said, um, you know, I had this job as a program coordinator and it was going so well for me. The program director was really kind and, and he knew that I was going through the things that I was going through. And I actually did share with him, um, what I'm about to share with you. And he created so many opportunities and so many ways to help me grow as a person. So I'm so grateful for every person that my young self met in the times that I needed. The universe looks out for you, y'all. If we, When we manifest things and when we look to the universe to help us to create um, the vibes, the energy and things that we need in life, it happens. So think positive and stay positive at all times as best as you can. Okay. Um, with that being said, y'all, I had this wonderful job and I had a wonderful relationship with Jane, the career counselor. I was actually still in, um, in connection with her because I was doing workshops, um, with with her job with my high school um where i was kind of just sharing um with other persons my age at that time on how to dress for job interviews how to land job interviews questions that are asked you know just help, having workshops to help assist her in what she was doing and you know i wasn't on the books i wasn't paid for that work or anything i volunteered to do that work because jane she showed me effortlessly how she worked um endlessly for us students at the school and so that was the best way I felt like I could pay her back and um it gave me wonderful public speaking skills and um different opportunities as well just from being able to show up and show out for her so this woman I mean I love her to this day y'all to this day but with that being said um so I knew that if I didn't get out of my mom's house, she was going to eventually put me out because it was just too much going on. I couldn't get to work on time. I was struggling with, like, she just, she was just stressing me away the F out, okay? So pretty much, um, one day we got into a fight and it was a small one. It was minuscule. It wasn't even something that was a big deal, but in my heart, I knew that it was, it was like a buildup. Like we was getting into it every day. We were struggling every day. And I was just like, oh my God, you know, it was that mother, daughter, you, you get getting too grown, make some decisions, get out of my house. Keep in mind, she has sent me to live down South that year before, or like two years before, like when I was in high school, but my grown self bought a bus ticket with that job I had and came back home. So she was over me already, you know, but, um, at this point I knew that I needed to do something and get going. So I remember like just we got into it and I was just like, I can't do this. I just can't do this. And I just started crying like overwhelmingly, like just going through the emotions. And um, Jane was so awesome. I had a direct number for her. So I called her and I said, Jane, I don't know what to do. I can't take it here anymore. This is just such a headache. I, I know I'm not going to be able to keep this job if I stay here. Like I was just telling her everything and everything. And she, Jane, I'm pretty sure she was doing a bunch of things with the phone right there, listening to me. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Uh -huh. Okay, Courtney. What I want you to do is pack a bag. And this is what she said to me. She said, pack a bag, put a, a, a outfit or two in it, nothing fancy, nothing expensive. Leave your jewelry, leave everything that is of value that you have, where it's at, get to it later. Bring your basic things, a bar of soap, some toothpaste, and come on and meet me downtown. I got downtown and she pawned me off to this guy named, we're going to call him Kay because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to just violate him or whatever because I wasn't a big fan of Kay. Kay was a little bit on the stinky side. And so when she tried to palm me off on Kay, I was like, I don't want to, uh-uh, no. And so she was like, Courtney, listen to me, go with Kay. And I'm like, I don't want to go with Kay. She's like, go across the street with Kay to the KFC right now. So I was like, all right, cool, whatever. So me and Kay went to the KFC. I'm sitting there with an attitude. He's sitting there like he know all my business and I'm just like mad he do or something. Cause he's, he was being kind, but he was also being like, I don't know what you got an attitude for. Like he was giving me a little tood, but it wasn't a attitude, like a bad attitude. He was giving me a, 
I got you, girl. Why are you being so mean sort of attitude? But the whole time, I'm like, mm-mm, stinky K, you know? Like, I'm just being mean. So anyway, um, what ended up happening was, um, in true fashion of Jane, she came bustling through the doors of the KFC with her coat not even on, in her arms or something, her bags, her arms full and packed with things. She unloaded it on the table. She jumped on the line, got us some food, got her some food and bought us a bucket of chicken. Told us, dig in, go for it. So I was hungry, started eating chicken. Actually got mine out quick before Stinky K got in his, you know? And um, actually, Stinky K became a super cool person. He wasn't even that stinky, honestly. And um, I loved him after that, to be honest. But he had a very grungy look. Um, as I stated, the school was on 2nd Avenue. Uh, if I didn't state, it was on 2nd Avenue and 14th Street. So, you know, this area is, I guess this, I don't know if this is considered Chelsea. I feel like Chelsea is on the the west side and the school is on the east side so it's not really considered chelsea i don't know if it's like hell's kitchen anyway it was manhattan where it's quite the bit grungy okay quite the bit grungy okay so with that being said he looked like he lived in manhattan his whole life he was grungy he had like a little fro but he wouldn't comb it all the time so it would look a little messy and locked -ish and he wore really big clothes and, you know, uh, he dressed a little gothy and everything was just a mess on him. He wasn't like super clean looking, but he was a very great, wonderfully spirited person. And he helped to be a part of the change of my life, you know, so pretty much... Um, when when Jane started talking to me, she said, I want you to listen, Courtney. Just listen. Shh, 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 listen. And I'm like, all right, I'm listening. And so Stinky K started talking and he was like, so, Courtney, I live um, in a program called the Covenant House. And I was like, okay. And he was like, yeah, so the program that I'm a part of is called Rites of Passage. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, yeah, so with Rites of Passage, you get a key to your own room. You can come and go as you please. You don't have a curfew. You don't have this. You don't have that. You pay $50. This is him telling me how the program works. He's like, you pay $50 a month um, to live there. And um, when you move out, they give you all of that money back minus $5 per month um, so that you can have a, a savings to move into your place. And so I'm like, now he has my attention. Like, okay, this sounds like a pretty dope program. So tell me more. And so he's like, yeah, you know, he's going on about the program. And now he's talking about the people and how the staff is pretty cool. And it's full of people that he loves and he likes. And so I'm like, sign me up. Take me there. Let's go. And he goes, but there's one small part. And I'm like, what's that? He's like, well, before you can go to Rites of Passage, you have to get through crisis. And I'm like, that just sounds bad. Like, <laughs> crisis? What is crisis? And he's like, I'm going to take you there tonight, and you're going to want to turn around. But don't turn around. Stay. He was like, I promise you, it gets better. Y'all. Jane was just busting her chicken down, like, listen to him, Courtney, listen to him, Courtney. And I'm like, Jane, oh my God, like, take me home with you. Like, I don't know what I thought was going to happen. But, so with that being said, um... School, like I told you, I don't know. I keep saying like I told you all, but in the last video, um, the school that I went to was from the hours of the evening class was from five to nine. So pretty much at nine o'clock, the school was, um, the students were coming out. So I decided to wait for some of my friends that I had knew were students, still students there. And so, um, you know, we all hung out and Stinky K was with us. And so um, my friends were like, why are you with him? And I'm like, oh, we're hanging out or whatever. This is just what's happening tonight, whatever. And so I actually ended up divulging and telling everybody what was going on. And um, so they were like very like, oh, okay, so we're going to go out with a bang. Let's go party on Chelsea. So we ended up walking to Chelsea. We partied. We hung out for a long time. Like, I was like, wow, he really don't have a curfew because I thought that that part was something that he made up. But this by this point, it was like almost midnight. So he's like, yeah, we got to get back. You know, we got to get going because I have things that I got to take care of tonight and I have to get up early in the morning. And so we started to head to crisis. Now, Crisis was on 8th Avenue, y'all, and 42nd Street. Actually, it was past 8th Avenue, but you had to walk through the bus terminal, Port Authority, at the back end, which, is that 8th Avenue? Yeah, I, no, that's, that's further than 8th Avenue. I think it was like 10th, yeah, like between 9th and 10th Avenue, honestly. 
And this area of 42nd Street, for those of you who don't know, is the area where you see prostitutes, you see pimps, you see all types of craziness going on in the city, all the derelicts, all the homelessness, everything. Matter of fact, to get to crises, you had to walk past an adult shelter, a single adult shelter. So it was all types of fiends, crackheads, all types of people just on the strip right there, selling everything under the sun that you could imagine. And he got me walking with him and he's like, Courtney, stay the course. I got you. I wouldn't steer you wrong. Like you, you got to trust me. You got to believe me. I got you. You're going to be okay. And I'm looking and I'm like, I'm starting to cry at this point. I'm really scared. And I'm really sad. And I'm like, oh my God, what the heck? This boy got me into and then we get to the, the crisis center and you had to walk down this long tunnel. It was almost like jail. And the only reason I could say that is because, you know, grown, but I had, I had a boyfriend who I used to go visit on Rikers Island and it was like, you know, a gated community behind, uh, uh, you know, some gates. It was like a community, a big building behind some gates with one security posted. It was, it reminded me of jail. So yeah. Um, it was like a security guard way down. We had to walk through these gates. And he told me as we were walking through the gates, he said, I'm not going to be able to go in there with you just so that you know. So just keep going, do what they say, and I will be here tomorrow. I'm going to, I'm going to check for you, you know? And he was like, just, just, just do it. Now also let me say he had me pretty open because while, while with my friends, um, when we were hanging out in Chelsea, he took me to the, the place where he lived, right to Passage. And the people were cool as heck. There was a bunch of teenagers and people hanging out front. Everybody was young. Everybody was cool. They were smoking their cigarettes and like just walking around and just chilling. And they was cool with the staff. And so I was like, oh, yes, I, you know, I'm with it. Like, absolutely. Manhattan, Chelsea cool people it's a vibe y'all it's a vibe so i was with it um so <sighs> that's what really sold me i believe and made me want to stay because crisis made me want to run honestly so when we got to the point where he couldn't come with me he knew the people there he was like hey so and so hey such and such and spoke to the security and then he bounced and then Ish got real. They took my name. They took my number, you know, like all my documentation. I had to prove who I was. And so pretty much you go up to, you, I'm a single woman. Um, it was a long process. I didn't get to the floor until maybe like three o'clock in the morning. Keep in mind, I still have to work the next day, but I had an evening job. But I will come to find out I wasn't going to be able to sleep until the evening. So what ended up happening was, um, you get to crisis and they, they like doing a check-in. They're checking you in pretty much and um, intake pretty much. That's what it's called. And that's funny because I actually worked later in life um, a few years ago at a homeless shelter for women and I actually did intake. So it was, it was definitely nostalgic. But um, yeah, so I did. I went through, as I was going through the intake process, um, there was this little short lady and I later found out that she was the head honcho. Like she was the director of crisis. Crisis was her program. I can't remember her name. Um, but she was quiet and she was just watching me. And I mean, intently like watching me, watching my moves, how I spoke, like everything. She didn't have nothing to say. She just watched me. And um, security handled me. They took me to the waiting area. They offered me food. They processed me and eventually they sent me up to a floor with all females on the floor. Now, as I got up there, you know, I'm walking in, I'm turning on, like the lights are coming on as you're walking down the hall. People are getting, girls are getting mad. Like what the, you know, sucking their teeth and catching the attitude. The staff brought me into the office and what's your name and what's this? Very stern. They was just getting my information and, you know, it was like morning and they was probably in the office sleeping. So they didn't really want to have to deal with a new intake, but you know, it was the job and, um, she was like, all right, well, here's some disinfectant. Handed me some disinfectant. Go grab you a mat. And you see the girls get on the floor. <laughs> and that's what I had to do, y'all. Got my little mat. Sprayed it down. She handed me some fresh sheets. I laid them down. And I 
had no choice but to lay there until I fell asleep. And of course, that wasn't until the sun came up. I chose a spot near the window. The window was gated too. It looked like jail. And um, I just watched the sun come up, honestly. And once the sun came up, I finally fell asleep. And when I finally fell asleep, <laughs> 